What is going on, guys, gals, and non-binary pals? Welcome back to Nerd Explosion, the weekly podcast where based on a monthly theme, we nerd out, but whatever we want. I'm Cameron. And I'm here. <laughs> and I'm here. <laughs> I have arrived. Uh, but today, as to uh, close off Reddit month, at least for this year, I figure we could save is the it- best for last. Oh, yeah, I guess it is the end of the month, huh? Yeah, because next week is July. And I have a uh, pretty good idea for uh, next week's topic. Or next month, I should say. Are we going to give a little teaser schmeezer or? No. Okay. (laughs) Everybody can just guess. Way to blue ball, everyone. (laughs) But to uh, close off Reddit month, I wanted to go through r slash Am I the Devil? Yes. Now, for those of you that don't know, r slash Am I the Devil is basically where the worst of wor- the worst of the worst on Reddit end up. Like people will take those stories of people that are just like the worst, and then just put it on r slash Am I the Devil? So, and I feel like a lot of these come from Am I the Asshole? Don't they? A good chunk of them come from Am I the Asshole. Some people, some come from other ones, but a good majority is r slash Am I the Asshole. I don't know why, and this has nothing to do with anything, but you were saying good majority. I heard good, m- and immediately my brain was like, good mythical morning. Good mythical morning. My friend said he said that to one of his, a customer at the Starbucks drive through Today we asked the age old question, am I the devil? Let's talk about that. Also, you can cut this out if you want to, but every time I look up there and see Spider-Man, it freaks me out. <laughs> I'm surprised it took you like that short a time to figure that out. Because I was like that was I, I was like, it's gonna take at least a day for you to notice Spider-Man up there. Um, I have OCD, I notice everything. Uh, but anyway, let's get into r slash Emma the Devil. Is that what you come here for, people? The banter? <laughs> but new episodes of this podcast come out every Saturday, yada, yada, yada. But instead of wasting your time, let's just dive straight into this, shall we? So this first story was originally posted in Am I the Asshole? Am I the Asshole for posting my penis on Reddit while in a relationship? <laughs> your face <laughs> starting off strong you could have stopped that with am I the asshole for posting my penis on reddit answer yes so I recently started posting my penis on reddit due to not getting enough attention from my girlfriend she's not very sexual n- never in- blah, 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 blah. she's not very sexual never initiates etc I send her pictures of myself and she avoids commenting on them now, I would understand if I was small and unpleasant to look at, but I'm above average and have I'm gonna a very nice looking I'm going to fucking stop you right there. Piece. No, you fucking don't. I'm going to just... No hesitation. No, you don't. Take it from a female perspective. The schween does not photograph well, okay? Unless it has been explicitly asked for, don't fucking send that shit. Yeah, and to play devil's advocate, neither genitalia f- pictures well. Like, you're never going to look at a p- uh, any picture of a penis or any picture of a vagina and like, wow, that is a really nice picture. Right. Like, like you can't photograph your junk well. Stop it. Unless it is explicitly asked for. Stop it. Uh, where Sorry, was Sorry, I'm fucking heated already. Where was I in this post? I love her and I'm not leaving her over that. We do have sex, and she does please me, although it's not as much as I'd like. I just feel like she should show more affection or attraction. So am I the asshole for finding it elsewhere? Yes, we've spoken about it many times, but I gave up on it. I have a headache. Immediately. (laughs) The top comment on here is, Honestly, part of me is just glad he didn't use this post to once again have a picture of his pee-pee on Reddit. I mean... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what do you think? Am I the asshole? Also, thoughts? Uh, another comment on here is, I think most guys overvalue how attractive their private parts are. They send unsolicited dick pics, expecting us to salivate over that. I have no desire to send or receive nudes, and he specifies his penis, so is he editing out everything else? 
I wouldn't be okay with my boyfriend posting nude photos online. Here's the thing. I also don't... <clears throat> this is a hot take. I don't like sending or receiving nude photos. Yeah. Because I have always been of the thought process that, like, I got to leave something to the imagination, right? Like, I'll I'll send, like, a, a little risque something or other, but it's never, like, full boobage, you know? It's just, like, some classy cleavage or, you know, just, like, a little, a little peek at the hip bone. It's, like, nothing, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, I mean, honestly. Like, a little honestly, bit more boudoir. Like, I'm not against people, like, posting new photos in places, like, do you, like, especially, like, if you do porn professionally. Oh, or absolutely. If you have, I mean, you, if you have like, an own. OnlyFans, and you're, like, you're getting paid for it, that's how you make some money, then, by all means, like, do you, but... And if you and your partner or your situationship or whatever like to send nudes back and forth, I'm not knocking that. Like, that's not... Don't misunderstand me. What I'm saying is that that's not my preferred style. Maybe that's not her preferred style. Maybe she doesn't like sending the whole I'm, I'm talking about OP's girlfriend here I should clarify maybe that's not her love language maybe take a second to figure out what she needs out of this relationship because obviously you are neglecting something if she's not giving you the attention and affection you think you deserve yeah exactly and I will say to kind of add to this post posting on reddit really like I know there's NSFW reddits out there but why do you want strangers commenting on your junk like if i was if if i biologically if i was a dude i would have that shit locked down so tight like it would be four knocks up in here yeah like why would you subject like if okay like to play devil's advocate again if you're not if you feel like you're not getting the tension from your girlfriend why would you then see the attention of the entire internet right because literally all that's gonna happen is there's just gonna point and laugh like if you like, and now we throw this is the part where we throw our head back and laugh <laughs> bad guy fall and poop classic comic, comical moment now it comes the part where we throw our head back and laugh <laughs> uh, but I mean I fucking love that movie it's but, true though like stop stop sending people and your also junk. I'm really like OP kind of gives me the it because he seems way too overconfident in his, his oh he listens to Joe Rogan for sure <laughs> he's a he's a ro bro and probably Andrew Tate let's be honest probably oh Sigma male lifestyle if she doesn't worship my penis then she's not the girl for me like fucking get over yourself my god take several seats alright next post this is, this also came from Am I the Asshole? Am I the Asshole for offering to order food because I don't know how to cook? Uh, OP is a 25 year old male. Okay. I recently moved in with my fiance, female 26. I worked full time with a hybrid working plan whilst she was working full time previously, but left her for a different position better suited to her career aspirations, but started out as part time. Recently, she's been taking on more hours and plans on eventually going full-time as well. We are renting, but I pay the rent in full and most other bills, and most other bills are 50-50. She cooks food for both of us. When she can't, we just uber slash dine out. However, recently, she asked me to cook. She had just come home from a hard day at work, I had been working from home, and I totally get it. She was tired, so I jokingly said what Chef Uber has for us, and she didn't take it too well. She Whoops, I accidentally scrolled. She got pissed and started telling me why I'm always wasting money instead of learning how to cook and what is so hard about following a recipe, etc. And I was quite shocked. Before this, I had once tried to cook for her and it didn't go well. We both had a laugh at the time and when we moved in together, she was the one cooking for both. I didn't have, even have to ask, so I was under the impression she was okay with this. We even joked about it occasionally. I told her that I don't know how to cook, and I don't see how that ever was a problem with Uber slash Deliveroo around, but she started complaining about how we can't live off ta uh, live off of takeaways, and how it's unhealthy and wastes money and all that. And I knew that wasn't true because we live in a major city. 
We've got tons of healthy options, and I was totally fine with paint for us. However, she wasn't convinced, and she started asking me how I even got through university, and I had already told her ages ago. I went to a university in my city and lived with my parents, and it's not like my parents ever found it to be an issue. My mom always cooked for me and would go out of her way to cook food for me whenever I was hungry. In fact, my mom had told me on numerous occasions to go and find a woman who will cook and clean for me herself. <clears throat> okay, I was on his side until just then. There's more. I communicated all of this to her, obviously not exactly like this, but then she went on a rant about how she does most of the household chores, but I told her that she literally told me not to the last time I tried to wash the dishes. She was laughing, watching me do it, and told me I wasn't doing it right, and told me to stop and did it herself. So I didn't think she felt so strongly about that either. I told her I could just buy a dishwasher if that was such a big issue, if that was such a big issue, and she responded with another rant about wasting money and how there isn't space, and that I know buying a house is a major goal for her, but I don't know what the big deal is. My parents never made me learn how to cook or wash the dishes or do whatever, they'd always do it for me. I don't know why it's such a problem now, especially modern solutions literally exist. Am I the asshole here? You're fucking 25. Oh my Learn God, my basic life skills. Okay, so I'm My gonna... fucking God. First of all, cut the fucking umbilical cord. And second, again, you're 25. You should know these basic life skills by now. Okay. My God. I also have some opinions. I agree with everything you just said, by the way. Yes. However... I was on his side because I was like, you know what? You work full time. If you have the money to do it, it's not a big deal. He said there's healthier options. And then he made the comment about how his mom said you should just find a woman to cook and clean for you. Fuck that bullshit. Okay, here's the thing. And I'm going to put you fully on blast right now. Oh, dear God. So we don't fight. Can I at least get a drink before you put me on blast? So we don't fight, and when we do fight, it's it's little things here and there, and we get over it quickly just because we're adults, and we know how to communicate, and we communicate our feelings and our frustrations. Yeah. And we have gotten into a really good habit of tr lessening the tension by just saying, okay, I'm not trying to be an asshole, but I've been feeling some feels, and we get into it. And nine times out of ten, the other person is like, you know what? I hear you. I'm sorry. We'll work on that. Right? Right. However, <laughs> in the beginning of our relationship, 10-ish years ago, I did the majority of the cooking. I did all of the cleaning. I did everything around the house. I put together the grocery list. You know. Yeah. Like, that's what I did. And I didn't mind doing it at first and then like her i got frustrated and i was like you fucking live here too why am i cleaning up your shit all the time you're a grown-ass man right right so we had that conversation and it got better and then it kind of faltered and then we had another conversation and it got better and then it kind of faltered again and then we had another conversation and so on until finally we were both like okay this isn't working we're both frustrated with each other what do we do? In a normal relationship, that's how that shit goes, right? Because yeah. now, it's fair to say, with my work schedule being <coughs> as weird as it is, you do a majority of the cooking. Yeah. But me having two days off in the middle of the week, I do the majority of the cleaning. Yeah. But that's fine, because we we clean together we cook together like we i feel like we're pretty equal split in our household responsibilities what i'm seeing happening here is weaponized incompetence and that shit pisses me off yeah that's exactly what it is like op is just because like, he's like oh i don't know how to cook i don't know how to do the dishes uh, you do it so much better oh my, you're you fucking me, my daddy always did it for me you're fucking 25 years old the fact that you can't cook some people are just like, not good cooks, and that's fine, but they at least take the time to try and learn. And also... And like OP's girlfriend said, how hard is it to follow a recipe? And also, like, even then, grilled cheese sandwiches. It's like the simplest fucking thing to make. Literally, fry an egg, put some bologna on a sandwich, call it a day. But 
my god, like these are basic life skills. Also, when your partner cooks for you, there is something so incredibly intimate about that that it just it make and maybe this is just me, I don't know. But it just makes me feel so good. It makes me feel cared for. It makes me feel appreciated. It just like when 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 you say like Hey, don't worry about dinner. I got it. And you cook dinner for us. It's just like, yeah, he does got it. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> he does have it. You know, it's just like it's one less thing in, in my day that I have to worry about because you're like, sit down, relax. I got it. I'll take care of it. And I will say, like, you know, I did learn to cook for my, my dad and everything. And I would say I'm a pretty damn good cook. You are. Well, and it helps that you learn from somebody who is professionally trained. Like, literally, who did it professionally. Who was for raised many, by a butcher. Many years. <laughs> yeah. And oh, I, I, my, some of my favorite memories are sitting in my kitchen with my dad. And I didn't help him cook all the time, but I was in the kitchen with him while he was making dinner. So I feel like I'm a pretty decent cook, too. But I also put in the effort to learn. Like, this dude is just fucking, it's weaponized incompetence. That's all it is. Exactly. And, like, that's the thing. Like, even if his parents didn't, like, teach him that and they're not going to teach him now at the age of 25, you know what's another option? Doodle it. Look it up on YouTube. And that's that's the other thing that just... YouTube is free. Literally. Like, fucking load up a Binging with Babish episode. Oh, my God. I love Binging with Babish. But not only that, but, like... I, I feel her frustration 100% because at the end of the day, I'm sure she just wants to scream, I'm not your mom, I'm not your maid, I'm not your chef, I'm your partner. Yeah, exactly. Because, girl, same. <laughs> I've been there. Wait, I to- yeah, I totally get why she's frustrated. I totally get it. So, in conclusion, yes, you are the devil. Yes, you are a devil because you refuse to learn basic life skills. Weaponized incompetence is a form of abuse. I said what I fucking said. So, do you want to keep the theme going of mama's boys or people who are obsessed with their parents? No, but yes. But I'm I'm good because I'm going to anyway. This was originally posted in Relationship Advice. Oh, Uh, it's never good when these ones end up on Am I the Devil? My girlfriend, 31 female, blurted out, I give up. I can't do this anymore. Could I, 28 male, have done something differently? Immediately, yes. So again, the girlfriend is 31, is a 31 female, and OP is 28 male. My girlfriend and I have been together for about one and a half years. We have traveled together, we have traveled together interstate and had several arguments before. Oh, it's not good say, if she's giving up a year and a half in. I'm guessing interstate means they've gone, they've traveled multiple states. All of which have been resolved before we went to bed. Which, okay, fair. I usually feel safe in the relationship and happy to voice out my concerns and annoyances with her. Mainly how she would pout and express discontent with what I've done. So I feel bad and then make it up to her in one way or another. Just for context, my parents do not like my girlfriend. This has been the case since day one, but we still decided to go through the relationship and try to weather a storm. We've had several discussions about my family, and I've always reassured her that it is something that takes time. We've had several dinners and celebrations with her family, but only two dinners with my family. Fast forward to a few days ago, where she invited me to a wedding of her friends in another country. We have been to several weddings. We have been to several weddings in the state. So, traveling together is not a new thing for us. The dates for the weddings were on my father and mother's birthday, both of which were near Christmas. She told me to have a chat with my parents as I still live under their roofs. My mother was not agreeable to traveling overseas with her and as I was thinking long term, I wanted to give my mother, I wanted to give my mother this to keep the peace and then negotiate having Christmas dinner together with my girlfriend. I told my girlfriend this decision and what I was aiming for and she started giving me the cold shoulder and the eye rolls and when we parted ways for the night she mumbled it's always about your mom. I got a phone call not too long later in the night where she suddenly blurted out I give up I can't do this anymore. 
It was a shock, and I was speechless more than anything. Was it a shock? Was she, it, though? She reaffirmed that this is what she wanted, as continuing things wouldn't change anything, so we ended things. I remember telling her that we would only ever bring up breaking up in talks and arguments if we were serious about it, never as a joke. She contacts me the next day to chat about it in person. She apologized and wanted to patch things up, to which I answered that it was better for things to break off as saying something like that had to come from somewhere and that she could find someone better to meet her timeline needs. Tears were shed and I took that as closure. I got contacted again the next day and was asked, do you really want to throw a relationship away? I felt bad and I kept, kept thinking that I could make things work. But the realization that she is older than me and our timelines in life wasn't matching up meant that I had to let her go instead of caging her in the relationship and with how my family dynamics were different to hers. I was really committed to the relationship and had laid out my plans and timeline no, for her. No, you fucking weren't. To get married and have children together. I even considered plans with my career to suit things better with her. I just needed time to set everything up, but I always felt pressured by her to get married quicker and have children quicker. Her sister has a boyfriend of longer duration, and she is treating it as a competition with her sister to who gets married first, as she's insistent that the first one that she's the first one to get married. Or that the first one to get married will have a grander wedding and get more monetary support from the parents. This rush was something I always disagreed with disagreed with her on and always felt pressured by. I always wonder if it was the right choice to let her go. People my age said no, but people in my parents' age said it is. Toulon didn't read, due to different family dynamics and timeline being slightly different, was it the right choice to let her go and what else could I have done differently? Okay, I take back my previous thought. Um, I think everybody sucks here. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think, A, cut the fucking umbilical cord. What are you doing 28 still living with your parents, by the way? Yeah, this top comment here says, When I read that his mother wouldn't let him go abroad with his girlfriend, I had to check his age. Nope, the ex is doing well to run from this family. But also, it's not fair to put pressure on him to get married and have kids before he's ready. I do. I will agree with that. Yeah. Like, don't rush into things. I like think that. they both dodged a bullet here, honestly. But it is frustrating because having dated a mama's boy previously, it is infuriating because nobody is ever going to be good enough for her son. And it's just like, you know what? Like, at some point, it gets into like a weird abuse situation. See, that's why I'm thankful for uh, my relationship with my mom, because I have a really good relationship with my mom. You and your mom have a very normal, healthy, mother-son relationship. Whereas, like, obviously I love her to death and I do anything for her, but also she knows not to fucking step on my boundaries. Like, I know... Step I know, on my toes. Like. I know people who, like, openly discuss their sex life with their parents, and I'm like... I could fucking never. I would rather die. Yeah, I, I could never either. Like, that's... Like, they don't need to know that shit. Like, the only thing they ever need to know, ever, is when and if we have kids. Mm. You know? Like, they don't need to know anything. <laughs> <laughs> right? No, it sounds like they both dodged the bill. It's not fair to put that kind of pressure on him just because you have a weird com- competition with your sister. But it's also not fair to continuously place your mother's opinions and approval over your girlfriend. Ooh, so this is this is uh, interesting. So from the original uh, from the original post. Sorry, I'll stop touching that. So from the original post, these are some like. Co- Would you stop? God damn it. You know, I didn't hear every single bit of that. <laughs> God damn it. I'm doing a podcast with a fucking child. The ADHD is ADHD. Okay. So, from the original post, this oh, is... please tell me the girlfriend commented. No, this is somebody commenting and they copied and pasted stuff from the original, original post. Oh, okay. Like, OP responding to comments. Uh, somebody said... Why didn't your parents like her at day one? OP responded, My mother in particular started judging her based on cultural superstitions. Absurd, and I've had arguments, heated oh, arguments. Oh, so she's racist. About Got these it. with them. 
They are also concerned about her being older than me. They fear that I will not complete my medical studies if I get married and have a family. They also mentioned about me unable to provide for her adequately. Oh, okay. So OP was in the medical is in the medical field, and the parents see that as a cash cow, and they're like, "Oh, well, you gotta become a great doctor because then we can benefit from it." I don't know if that's exactly what it is. No, that's but what that's, I was picking up too. So pretty, you're probably not wrong. <laughs> it's a pretty good guess. Uh, another comment. Why do you live with your mommy as a grown-ass man? <laughs> That's what I want to know. OP responds, It's a cultural thing. Also, I'm currently unable to rent out as I'm paying for my own tuition and for medical school and working. I'm currently working weekends and doing my placements Monday to Friday. The money I earn is only enough to cover for university and a bit more. Okay, fair, I guess. I guess, yeah. I guess if you're in college, you know, you're still young. I, I forget how old OP was. 28. 28. I mean, that's still a little old to be still living with your parents, but if you're still paying for school, like, I get it. Especially in this economy, I get it. I love my parents. I would rather die than live with them again. Uh, another comment. OP. So you thought that offering to let... Well, this isn't OP talking. Somebody is, like, talking to Addressing OP. them, yeah. OP, so you thought that offering to let her come to Christmas dinner at your mother's house was a deluxe trade in exchange for missing her friend's wedding and traveling overseas. You thought that she'd think that was a prize, missing her own beloved family holiday to spend Christmas with your parents who dislike her? OP responded, this is a perspective I did not consider. Thank you. (laughs) That's literally the whole comment. Oh, I I didn't even think about that. Like, I didn't think about her didn't. wants and needs. I didn't think about her needs. What? Other people's needs? What? You mean I'm not the center of the universe? Uh, My mommy <laughs> thinks I am. Somebody else was like, dude that roasted. And OP responded, oh good, this is a long time coming. I've also been feeling the need to leave home for a while now. Then fucking go. Literally go. I can't speak... To the cultural aspect of adults living with their parents because that's not a culture that I'm a part of. Um, but at some point, like, dog. <laughs> yeah, like, literally, cut the fucking umbilical cord. Jesus Christ. Like, stop relying on your parents for everything, especially at 28. I mean, even at, like... 21 or 22, you just got to start being on your own. At 18, you should be more willing to be, like, Hey, I didn't move out until I was 20. Watch yourself. But, like, I oh, totally understand, no, I was understand, 21 like, when, we moved, when I moved out. I understand, like, living with your parents and stuff, especially if you're still paying for school, but I I don't know. I just don't agree with the whole, like, relying on your parents for absolutely everything no like, don't and, let them control your life be your own independent adult and like i said we can't speak to the cultural aspect of that but what i can speak to is how incredibly freeing it's going to be being on your own like we were just talking about this the other day i'm going on a trip this winter by myself mm-hmm. and i am terrified because i've never done anything on my own but i'm also so excited for that reason to just be able to travel on my own and go at my own pace and you know do all the stuff and all the things but like I think that's something everybody should experience at least once in their life whether it's going on a solo trip or moving out on your own for the first time or just one of those quote quote unquote big person moves you know like just finding your footing on your own. There's something so incredibly rewarding about that. Yeah, exactly. Do I think this deserves to be on Am I the Devil? No. Uh, I mean, I'm more willing to agree with the whole devil thing, considering he's basically like, oh, I want you to stop all of your stuff and, you know, cancel all your plans of friends to, be- to uh, you know, benefit my parents and their wants and needs. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but it doesn't... I mean, he doesn't paint her in a great light either. I just think both... Yeah. Honestly, I think both of them suck here. Yeah, I think this is an everybody suck situation, but I don't think this is necessarily an am I the devil situation. I just think everybody's just 
everybody just sucks here. Like, honestly, like, like, I don't know, like, I, I don't know the whole cultural aspect, like you said, can't speak on that, but just, oof. I will, I will say, if it's a cultural thing and there's, like, certain things you do based on your culture, Reddit's probably not the best place to discuss that kind of right, stuff. Right, Reddit will eat you alive. Especially if you already have your own ideals in mind and you're asking for the opinions of strangers. Yeah, that's, that's a rough place. Um, all right. Next post. And are you ready for the name of the subreddit that this post came from? Oh, God. This was originally posted in r slash pussy pass denied. <laughs> the title of this post I'm is... I'm sorry. I'm going to need you to repeat that. r slash pussy pass denied. Yep. The there title... It that was my very last shred of faith in humanity. <laughs> <laughs> the the title of the post is I stopped moving out of the way for women and it's been shockingly liberating <laughs> but so, excuse me so you know how I gotta read this post <clears throat> hold on get your fedora no I'm not even going that direction <clears throat> my whole life I danced like a circus monkey to make way for women in public spaces until I realized that they blatantly expect men to do this like it's some kind of innate privilege they were born with, and men moving out of the way should be the default street etiquette while they don't even have to move their shoulder. When walking on very narrow sidewalks or pathways, I noticed that women automatically claim the inside of the sidewalk or the safest side, forcing you to literally jump into the road just inches away from moving cars. In supermarkets slash stores, they always expect you to go around them. Even when you're the one pushing a full trolley and all they're carrying is a carton of milk and three bananas. Older women, 40 plus, just stop in the middle of the aisle and block... <laughs> did, that, did that set you off? The 40 plus considers older women 40 plus? Uh, I'm seething. <laughs> Older women just stop in the middle of the aisle and block the whole way with their big menopausal butts. Menopo- boy! <laughs> boy! Boy, if you don't get... I've been alive... Oh, I swear for God. <laughs> I've been alive for 36 years, and I lived Bitch. in three different countries with very different cultures, and have never seen men behave like that, unless they were disabled or extremely old, and they're very apologetic about it. Now... I don't give a fuck anymore, and it's been fun as hell. When a woman is walking towards me, I increase my pace and look her dead in the face. It's hilarious how their survival instinct kicks in, and they jump out of the way in the last second. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you're a predator. Afraid, they're fucking afraid of you. So you're a predator. Got it. If I'm in a supermarket and I see them blocking the aisle, I just bump my trolley into them and say, Oh, sorry, love. Didn't see you just standing there blocking the way. The look of shock and entitlement on their faces when they realize you're not treating them like they're some kind of royalty is priceless. Men, stop being women's servants just because that's how you were raised. They don't own public space just because they were born with a vagina, and chivalry in the age of equality is modern day slavery. Drizzle, drizzle. And he put a little crown emoji. Um, uh, fuck this guy. Tell me you're a 38-year-old virgin without telling me you're a 38-year-old oh, virgin. Oh, no, 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 no. He, 36. 36-year-old virgin. Oh, he was 36. Me. Um, Here's the thing. I do agree these are the slightly of, these are the with of people one point punch him in the face. that he made. I was slightly. like, careful, careful which point, because this is like 99% very shit points. No, there's one point that he made that I kind of, there was a part of me that was like, I mean, when you are walking on a narrow pathway, fucking move. Like, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're she, they, him, his, hers, whatever. Move out of the way. Like, it's I, just common courtesy. I did, I do kind of Make that. space like, for people. If you're obviously in the way, it doesn't matter, like, who you are. Be courteous of other people. Yeah, like, I, first of all, I'm not gonna... Okay, 
but there's a caveat here. Like, the biggest thing I hate is, like, if I'm at the mall or whatever, and there's a group of people walking in front of me, and they just stop oh my and God, block I hate up the that. whole walkway. Oh, my God. I want to... Like, this... And that, that kind of hatred stemmed from high school, too, because... Like, in high school, like, if I'm trying to go through the hallway to get to, from one class to another, and a bunch of people just stop in the hallway, I just, I so badly wanted to take off my backpack and just start swinging. Like, fucking move! Right. But, here's the thing. I don't care who you are coming towards me. If we're in an enclosed, or not enclosed, um, a narrow space... I am going to shift my shoulders. I'm going to make space for you, and I expect the same courtesy. Like, I do the same thing. Like, if I'm in an aisle or whatever, and I'm just standing there looking at someone, and I see somebody coming behind me, like, if I'm close to, like, where the shelf is, I'll, like, suck in, like, you know, su- yeah, suck or like, the butt in. Yeah, or, like, the, in, like, in the supermarket, I, there are some times where we go shopping and I'll take the cart and I'll go down an aisle to look for something, but I'm not quite sure what the something I need is or where or whatever, what flavor or whatever. So I do tend to stand kind of in the middle of the aisle, but I'm always as close to the the shelf that I'm look the shelf opposite of what <laughs> rewording I have rerouting. To, hold on, I have to reboot. System reboot. So if I'm looking at the shelf in front of me, I am always as close as I can be to the shelf behind me so that people can still move in front of me. Yeah, it's like what I do, but I'm, I do it the opposite. Like, I like suck in so people can get behind me. Yeah. Like, I'll do I'll do either or. Like, if I'm on So you go aisle, right up to the shelf and I go back away Sometimes from. I'll be up to the shelf and if I'm away from it, yeah, I'll do the same thing where I, like, squeeze in so people can sneak by. Or if there's nobody in the aisle and I'm kind of in the middle of the aisle because there's nobody there, if somebody comes in, I do adjust because, like, it's... It's just common courtesy. Like, make space for each other. I mean, we're Minnesotans, so we're from the land of, oh, just going to sneak right past you Oh, excuse me, I'm just going to sneak right past you. Oh, just going to sneak right past you. But the fact that he's like, oh, women, blah, blah, blah. Like, first of all, I've seen men do that shit, too. So don't even come at me with the it's just women bullshit. Like, also, secondly, OP, I'm talking directly to you. Uh, You're the fucking problem. You are what's wrong with America. Not just America. Excuse me. You are what's wrong with the world. This whole, I'm going to stop treating women like people, and it's been so liberating. Like, fuck you, dude. Like, literally. Like, the the one part where he's like, like, if somebody's walking toward me, if a woman is walking towards me, I increase my pace and look her dead in the face. Like, oh, so you're basically being a predator. Like, this is why women say all men. But you know what? I do. This is why women choose the bear. I do have to cut OP some slack. This is why I choose the bear. I do have to cut OP some slack because if I was 36 year old, 36 years old and a virgin and balding, I would be angry too. <laughs> Damn. So. Got him. <laughs> I dare. If my hairline was running from me like the Olympic torch, I'd be upset too. <laughs> Damn, bro. Got him. Shout out Drew Afalo on TikTok. Got that from her. <laughs> Damn, bro. Got she was. I was watching a video she did the other day, and she was like, the first thing men will go to to criticize you is always your weight, 100% of the time. And she was like, so how you're going to get back at them? Three things. Height. Hairline. Penis size. No. But I couldn't is, remember the other one, but it one. was funny. Like, that is a good one. Like, I'm I'm secure about everything. Like, I'm not going to go into detail, but if you really want to destroy a man's ego, go after his penis size. See how fast they get mad. But here's the See thing. See how fast they shut down. The, well, yeah, men are... It's especially guys like this. You go after their penis size, they're going to fucking... Well, and he, guys <laughs> like that, uh, because, down. okay, first of all, we know that it's not all men, but it's enough, and that's the problem. But... Let me hop up on my Again, soapbox here real quick. This is why women choose the bear. Oh, I'm choosing the bear 100 percent of the time. I'm choosing a bear, the bear in the woods. And I'm are, a, man. a bear in the woods or a man? I don't know. Bear 100 percent of the time. See, and that's the thing. I'm a man, and I choose the bear. Well, and I remember, and this is what's so great about you, because I just roasted you a couple minutes ago, and I'm going to sing your praises. <laughs> you felt bad about roasting me, so now you're gonna I don't be feel nice bad about me. roasting you because it was justified. Okay. But, <laughs> But here's the thing. I remember watching, 
I can't remember what I was watching, but you were watching it with me. It was one of my drama shows or crime shows or or what have you. I don't remember exactly what I was watching, but this is going to bother me now because I can see the scene perfectly. Um, But I was watching my show and the character was talking about an assault and how... um, Oh, I was watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Was that it? Yes, because... I was because Amy was talking about how nobody takes her seriously as a police. Um, I can't remember what her title was, but nobody was taking her seriously because she was a woman. And Jake would walk in and they would be like, oh, you're a cop, right? And she was like, I'm literally in uniform. But she was talking about her experiences as a woman and what that's like and Jake was like I had no idea that that's what you go through and I remember looking over at you and you legitimately had tears in your eyes I don't remember if I had tears but I knew I know I was definitely uh, def- that definitely made me angry no you had tears because I remember this specifically because I paused it and I was like are you okay and you were like I never would have thought that just me being in an elevator would be scary to somebody yeah and I was like, if I didn't know you, there's no way in hell I'm getting in the elevator with you. And, like, that's my biggest thing. Like, and, like, I'm not doing this to just, you know, make myself look good. Like, I generally just want to, you know, I want to break that stigma. Or wh- whatever word you put. Like, because of all the men being like, oh, yeah, we're creepy, we're pervs, whatever. Like, I want to break the well, stigma. Well, and, like, that's, and that's the hard part of it is because you can't be like, oh, don't worry, I'm a safe person. Because like, that automatically is going to make me think, why did you have to say that? Why did you have to qualify well, yeah, that? Because you can't what say are you that thinking? Because it gives people the wrong idea. Like, don't tell people. And like, that's the other thing too. Like, if you're a guy, and, you know, you're you're fine. Like, you're not like, you know, you're not a problem person. Don't tell people you're not a problem person. Like, just you know, actions speak louder than words. Here's another great don't example. Don't just say you're a good person. Be a good person. Here's another great example. And I feel bad because I cannot remember the creator's name right now, but he is very flamboyantly gay. Like, just out and proud and... Well, that narrows it down. <laughs> but he was... He stitched a video of himself. He was, like, doing a vlog. And this girl walked past him and he turned around and he was like, hey, I like your outfit. And she was like, I have a boyfriend. And he was like, oh, girl, you look amazing. And she was like, oh, thank you so much. And he was like, it was so, he was like, she. when I first told her that she looked good, she clutched her purse. She got tight inside, like her, she tightened up to herself like she was going to run. And she was immediately defensive. And he was like, and as soon as I changed my octave and let her know, hey, it's all good. She relaxed, her eyelids closed a little bit, and she was like, she was fine and I was like it's so sad that we live in a society where we see a man and immediately think danger well yeah and it doesn't well the only reason with that is because there's enough men that that has become a problem right like like and yeah again back to the thing that like it's not all men but it's enough men like, like it's, I, it's enough men that it's that are the problem. When I was working at the mall, and I'll never, I'll never forget this. I was working at the mall, and I didn't drive, so I had to take the bus. Yeah. Well, the mall closes at nine thirty. You take an hour to clean your store. You're not leaving till ten thirty, eleven o'clock. Mm-hmm. And I had to leave by eleven because the last bus left at eleven fifteen, and it took me about ten minutes to walk from my store to the bus station. Yeah. And I remember getting in the elevator and this, um, I was on the third floor. I got into the elevator on the third floor and it stopped on the second floor to pick up another passenger. And this passenger was like this huge dude, like six, seven, two eighty, like just beefcake of a man. Right. Like built like a linebacker. Yeah. Right. And he got into the elevator and I, admittedly, was scared. Well, yeah, because I was big like, dude just gets in the elevator. I'd be scared too. I was like, here's this big dude. I'm at the at the time. I'm 18 years old. Like I'm tiny. I when I was 18, 
I'm still five foot four, but when I was 18, I was probably 120 pounds soaking wet. Like I was, I was little. And this dude is probably double my size, built like a linebacker. And I'm trying not to profile, but I'm scared. Yeah. And so then (laughs) we go down and I realize that he's going down to the bus stop too. And I'm like, fuck, 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 fuck. Because I know that my bus is like way at the end of the line, like all the way down. Like I have to walk for a minute, right? Mm -hmm. So then we get down there and the doors open and he kind of gestures for me to go first because he was knowing what I know now. He was being polite. He was, you know, ladies first. So he let me get off and I start hustling (laughs) to the end of the bus line right so then this dude this little scrawny white guy stops me and he's like talking to me for a minute and I'm trying to be polite and I'm like you know I'm trying to catch my bus like I gotta go whatever so then he was like oh no no I'm a tattoo artist and I think you have beautiful skin and then he grabbed my fucking leg and like lifted up my leg to quote yeah that's a no no show me where he wanted to tattoo my skin or whatever so, so you punched him, right? A fucking linebacker behind me walks up and goes, bro, let the lady go. Puts his arm around my shoulder and guides me away from this dude. Good looking out, man. And I was like. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't have to be scared of you right now. You're my hero. Right. So I was like, I just kind of like looked up at him and I was like, thank you. And he was like, you looked petrified and he was like I felt bad because he's like I could tell that you were a little whatever and I was like no 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 it's not that and he just looked at me he was like I have sisters I know it's okay and I literally burst into tears yeah that's uh that's a like just grabbing somebody's leg like that yeah, like man like, or woman don't that's a fucking no-no. touch me well and the guy that was in the elevator with me he he was like he kind of was apologetic like he barely put his arm around me but like the, I think the dude that was that quote tattoo artist I think he was on something because this guy was like barely touching me but it looked like you know whatever and he was like I'm sorry I didn't he's like I'm sorry to just be all up in your business or whatever and I was like no no, no. I was like honestly like that guy I, I was and I was just like I'm 18 like I don't know what to do like that was the scariest moment of my life I was like please don't fucking touch my leg yeah like fucking who does that see it's always the skinny creepy white guys that are cracked out (laughs) (laughs) that are the scariest ones oh my god but yeah anyway if you're listening a guy that potentially worked at hats lid store and you remember a terrified 18 year old little girl thank you sir from the bottom of my heart thank you for saving me from that crackhead oh my god so we went on a tangent for so long I totally ignored the edit OP put in oh there's an edit yeah you want to fucking hear this shit yes edit all the people calling me an incel and gay are cute I don't think you guys realize how you're doing nothing but to prove my point Calling someone misogynistic while simultaneously being homophobic and reducing women's value to sex objects will never not be funny to me. Also, I stand by what I said about chivalry. Funny how my previous post on this sub was criticizing that entitled women who expected men on the train to stand for her, but no one seemed to have a problem with that one. Where did all the white knights come from? Okay, so you're just digging, just keep Dig in your own grave, my guy. At, the, at this point, this guy has a fucking excavator, a fucking backhoe. Like you're that just he's digging his own grave with uh, men. And again, when I say that, not all men, but enough. Not all men, but enough for sure. Do we want to do one more, or do we? Did did that take a lot out? Do we? Do we have the energy for one more? <laughs> Do I have the energy for one more, or do I have the spoons for one more? Do you have the spoons for one more? I don't think I have the spoons for one more. All right, we'll call it there, then. That last one upset me. Yeah, seriously, fuck fuck this guy and anybody who's like that guy. I'm looking at you, fucking Andrew Tate. But, I guess with that, that's been, uh... Sorry for my 20-minute rant about when I was 18, (laughs) working at the mall. But... 
that has been r slash am i the devil that uh that took a lot out of us and uh definitely need a break after that uh i need some the, eye bleach after this some eye bleach <laughs> I'm going to continue watching my NCIS marathon. I like you say, like, I need something to calm me down after this. I'm going to watch a crime show. It, okay, first of all, for any of you out there who watch NCIS, you're going to stand by me 100%. I know you will. Leroy Jethro Gibbs can do no wrong. He is, uh... If I he, die, he I want that man bear. to investigate my death. He is the bear that people would choose. Either him or Lieutenant Joe Kenda. Either one of them. But yeah, I guess with that, you know, we'll call it a call it a Reddit month. Uh, the for the month of July. Uh, I have an idea what the just theme give, is. Just give a little, just give a little, a little taste, a little, a little um, snippet. I guess I will say, for the month of July, we're gonna be testing our video game knowledge. What video games? You'll just have to wait and see. But with that, we're gonna call it an episode here. Uh, do positive things out there. Remember to choose the bear every time. Drink your water. Uh, wash your hands, wash tell your, your hands, friends you love them. Tell everyone you love them. I've been Cameron. I've been Kate. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Nerds, Nerds out. out.